Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. We are working on part four of Real Estate Agents Ultimate Business and Life Plan. And we're going to be going through the next phase, which is certainly, I think all of you will agree is the best phase. It's called Prepare for Success. <laughs> so we're going to be getting into the weeds a little bit now that you've got some momentum. And remember, Julie and I are doing our best to give you guys an overview of really all the things you need to be completing when you complete your real estate treasure map. And that is your free fill in the blank business plan. And if you've not yet down downloaded that for this year, please go ahead and get that done. Text the word Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, text the word Harris to 47372. Go ahead and do that now. You can do that while you're listening to our podcast and um, just text the word Harris to 47372. And remember, a message and data rates may apply. But when you're completing the real estate treasure map, you'll realize that uh, this week's podcast go hand in glove with that book uh, because it's going to walk you. We're giving you hopefully the motivation, the education to really take seriously the opportunity you have in front of you over the next few years. This is going to be the start of what Julie and I believe will be a run of some incredible years in real estate for a whole variety of reasons that we've talked about on past podcasts and we'll be talking about on future podcasts as well. Um, so yes. moving forward, Julie, we're going to talk about a prepare for success. That's right. So remember, listeners, the seven P's of real estate, proper previous planning prevents pitifully poor performance. So yesterday we talked about completing your pre-listing package, your listing presentation, and even a buyer's presentation. So there's different levels of this, Tim. There's agents that just don't have any of that stuff. And maybe this is the first time they've realized that they even need it. Then we have agents that have some of those things, and maybe they've used it, maybe they haven't. Then we've got agents that think they're using it, but they don't win every time. And then on the top tier, we've got agents that are pretty good at it, but really need to polish up their skills to take it to the next level. And what, so it's important, this, so we're giving you training right now. Training is not coaching. Coaching is completely different. And now Julie and I are going to do a little bit of coaching. If you ask yourself why it is that you haven't taken the opportunity to put all your best efforts towards being a listing agent, and if you really were to drill down, it, the first answer you're going to give is no leads, or you're going to just give some sort of, you know, I would say institutionalized type answer. But the real reason is that it comes down to lack of skills and a confidence issue. And that's the reason you plug into a proven system like what we offer. When you have, as Julie's referring to now, example is a pre-listing pack, but it's not just a pre-listing pack. It's the entire listing process from all the set, from the start of uh, being a proactive lead generator to pre-qualifying to presenting, to negotiating to closing and the whole process. That's what we teach you as a core element of our coaching program. Now, obviously we teach you how to add buyers agents and we teach you how to do marketing. If you want to do that, we teach you how to, you know, all the things that everyone else is, uh, uh, offering to you guys. We do that as well. But the difference is, is we're doing the most important work first and trying to get you to do the most important work first, which is learning how to be a powerful listing agent. Because in real estate, whoever controls the listing inventory controls the real estate market. That goes for brokerages, agents, teams, the whole ball of wax is predicated on who owns the listing, who controls the listings. Make that be you. Don't allow yourself to be seduced into believing that you don't have to become a listing agent if you want to last. Julie and I heard a statistic yesterday that 80%, uh, no, 87%, get this listeners, this is, um, you know, higher than it has been. This number has increased, okay? 87% of all the agents, I see, in five years, 80%, 87% of all the agents that are in the business will are not yet licensed. So in other words, in five years, basically 90% of the entire industry is going to be replaced with new agents. And I think that's pretty incredible to think about. And that's a number that's increased. Now we've watched, that's a National Association of Realtors number. We've watched that number increase. It did the churn in this industry. That's where essentially you can just envision the, you know, the word churn and that's kind of, it's like an onomatopoeia. So that's what it is. 
but the churn in this industry in essence is getting worse. The number of agents failing in this industry is increasing, not decreasing. And you've got to ask yourself why. And the answer is, is they're coming into the business, not learning how to actually survive. They're not learning that moss grows on the north sides of trees in the northern hemisphere and on the south sides of trees in the southern hemisphere. They're not learning how to actually survive. They're just being told to do all this whiz-bang fancy marketing stuff and, and somehow magically the business will come to you. It doesn't. And this year we're going to see a, the a churn, in our opinion, is going to increase as will the number of agents getting into the business. Because as the overall economy starts to adjust, which is going to because of inflation, inflation most likely will lead to layoffs. More people get real estate licenses. At the same time, agents who are not able to sell real estate because they frankly and forgive me for being so bold, did not tune into this podcast and become coaching clients sooner who believed that they could just TikTok their way to success, those agents will fail out of the business. Now, here's where Julie and I's heart and souls are. We are not ever going to pull punches on the people who are selling you guys things that we know will lead to your failure. We will always call it out. We could, you know, there's no benefit business-wise for us doing that, but it's what we feel morally obligated to do. So you've got to look at the realities. The realities are the cards are massively stacked against you. The realities are if you don't learn to live a life, especially in your real estate business, of doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level, you won't last. 90% of all agents in five years are, don't even have real estate licenses yet. I mean, just think about that. That's, in other words, 10% of you listening right now with a license will survive that long. Yeah, basically. Based on actual facts. That's not our speculation. That's just tracking what's going on. So your decision is to decide, are you going to be part of that surviving and thriving 10% or are you going to become a statistic? So that means doing things like proper previous planning, actually having presentations, actually having real pre-qualification scripts, following the seven-step listing process. And going on to point number two, because we, we covered a lot of this yesterday, this is all under the uh, heading of preparing for success. Here's one that they also avoid. Point number two, follow your ideal daily schedule. What? I've got to follow a schedule? Yes, your schedule should reflect your goals. And what does that mean? It means that 80% of your time should be spent on proactive lead generation. Yes, 80% of your work day should be spent on proactive lead generation and 20% of your time should be spent on transaction maintenance, closings, etc. Now, the vast majority of you have that flip-flopped or even worse, you're not even spending any percentage really on proactive lead generation. You are operating on luck and hopium. We know this because they say that to us sometimes when they come to coaching is that, you know, somehow I'm getting by, but getting by I'm getting sick of. So just because you're lucking into some transactions, that's not the same as following a plan. Now, uh, Julie said uh, key words there. I want you guys to write those down and not forget. Proactive lead generation is not buying leads. Those of you who are, again, building your businesses on the idea that you're going to be able to buy your buyer leads and buy your seller leads are not going to make enough profit to stay in the business. And that's unfortunately what's happening. If you do get a seller referral nowadays, especially if it's an institutional re uh, seller referral, not from a, another agent, you're going to be paying upwards to a 50 uh, plus percent referral fee. So just think about that, guys. If you have a sale that's referred to you, a listing side, you sell it, and let's say the commission's $10,000, just to get that business that's going to cost you $5,000 plus, now you haven't even paid your broker or your own personal expenses yet. You guys get the point? And you that's if the deal goes perfectly and you're not chipping in here and there. Exactly. And you're not also paying, you know, or, somebody else to manage it. And you didn't have to reduce your commission to get the listing that's in the first saying. place, right? Mm -hmm. So guys, the reality of it is, is that proactive lead generation is the way forward for all of you. And that's, what, that's the core element of what we teach you in our coaching program. We teach you over 20 different ways to proactively lead generate for sellers. And these lead sources do not cost you a, di a dime. We're not talking about running ads. We're not talking about maximizing Facebook ads. We're not talking about YouTube and this, that, and the other. We're talking about good old fashioned proactive lead generation that produces an incredibly profitable result. And that's what gets you into power, right? So none of what you just mentioned had the word try in it. I'm going to try an ad on Facebook. I'm going to try to optimize this. I'll try a new video, whatever. This is all proven, predictable lead generation, which puts more profit in your pocket, but also gets you into control. And we know that that's something that drives you guys crazy. You say all the time you feel like you're out of control. Well, it's because you are if you're not a great proactive lead generator. So the only thing that makes you money in real estate or things that make you money in real estate are lead generation, furiously fast lead follow-up, pre-qualifying, presenting, negotiating, and closing. So if it's not on that list, 
you shouldn't be doing it. And you know, our coaching clients have that list memorized. <laughs> yes, they do. Well, let's go back and let's really drill down on what Julie just said. The number one thing all of you need to be really effective at is proactive lead generation. Proactive being you're not buying the leads, you're generating it yourself. Second is furiously fast lead, follow up, then pre-qualifying and then presenting. Those are really the four things. Now, here's the little permission thing that a lot of you guys really like when you hear us say it. You don't really have to get good at any other aspect of the real estate business other than those things. Because if you think about it, guys, logically, if you can proactively lead generate consistently every single day and you work your business around the magic number um, that, you know, that's the number of listings you need at all times to meet or exceed your financial obligations and your hopes and your dreams. That's all part of the real estate treasure map. Text the word Harris to 47372. Message and data rates may apply. But then you go, then you're really efficient with your lead, uh, your furiously fast lead follow up and your pre qualifying, and then of course you're presenting. Beyond that, everything is negotiable or optional. Now, some of you over time will add assistance. You'll form a team, and that's great. We can help you do that too. Others of you are going to want to start doing some more, uh, you know, marketing, social network marketing, YouTube channeling, and all the rest of it. You guys know we do that as part of our coaching business, and of course, we can teach you to do that as well. But the primary core business has to be predicated on proactive lead generation, furiously fast lead follow-up, pre-qualifying, and presenting. Those are the four skills that you must become incredibly efficient at, and then you have power, then you have control, then you have consistent cash flow. That's right. So if you are not that great at generating leads, really the rest of the list doesn't matter because you're not going to have a lot to follow up on. You're not going to be presenting to anybody. doesn't matter if you have a transaction coordinator. You see how why we put that in the first place. And there's another thing too. When you think about leads, leads by themselves are complete. They're useless. They absolutely have no value. A pre-qualified motivated lead has value. And so what a lot of you guys are doing is you're uh, stockpiling these massive CRMs full of, you know, That's just right. leads. They're just essentially names and, you know, some digital notes that you wrote and phone numbers and all this other stuff, but they're not, who cares? It has no value. It's just a database. It's not even a lead. Really. Exactly. Though it's you being, it's like a public service announcement when you send them an email telling them about the real estate market, you're not actually building a business doing that. You need to learn to go through those leads, pull out the ones that are actually motivated, use our pre-qualifying script, set appointments, take the listing, sell the house. That, that means is actually talking to them though, right? This <laughs> exactly. is not like a double opt-in page with a drip. Well, it does, truthfully, the double opt-in page with the drip and all that stuff takes a lot of skill, takes an extraordinary yeah. amount of time, but it's, it's time that's misspent compared to doing proactive lead generation. And that's really, that's a whole soapbox that I'm yes. not going to be tempted to step up on. But really the moral of the story is what we're trying to tell you is this business is painfully easy if you let it be. When you allow yourself to be distracted with all the other, you know, essentially whiz bang ideas that come at you every year, this time, especially you will never take the time to learn to be a proactive lead generator. Yes. What we ask you to do is going to require skill. Yes. It's going to take you building momentum, but when you've done it, how will you feel listeners when every single day you wake up knowing that you can proactively generate, not just any lead, but a pre-qualified listing lead every single day you can wake up and you can say, you know what? I know for a fact that tomorrow I know exactly how to go about generating a pro act, uh, generating a, a listing lead, a pre-qualified listing lead. That's the primary focus of our coaching program. Nobody else is offering that. So speaking of your ideal daily schedule rules, write this down, spend more time working in your business. That's the list we just gave you focusing on lead generation and less time working on your business, all the fun, messing around stuff, everything that's not on that list. Spend time working actually in your business. Next little point with your schedule, you must have a consistent start and end time to your day. There's nothing more distracting than having different rules for different days. If you're on vacation, fine, sleep in. Otherwise, if it's work week, you started at the same time, you ended at the same time. Mornings are for setting new appointments and afternoons are for going on them. So take control of your time. Here's the thing. If you're not controlling it, someone or something else always will. You guys know this. Think about how you're closing appointments, for example. Are you asking, can we get together at three o'clock tomorrow? Or are you stating that you have either three o'clock tomorrow or 5 p.m. Saturday, which is best for you? Have preset times that you want to keep appointments and stick to them as much as possible. Now let, let's just, let's just dispose, just, what's the word? I'm struck. Juxtapose? Thank you. Julie's had more caffeine than me, or she just might be smarter, one of the two, or both. I can just read your mind. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Well, so here's, uh, I'm going to share with you guys a little quick story about a friend of ours that owns 
uh, I guess owns quote unquote, a really big YouTube channel and some of their videos, this is not in the real estate space. I'll tell you the channel too. You guys can go watch the videos. It's called J house and the guy and his wife and their three kids, or maybe it's four, I think it's four. And, um, yeah, it's a fun little, you know, family oriented, almost, you know, virtual sitcom, YouTube, what have you go check it out. That's not the point of what I'm telling you. Some of their videos get 50 million people watching them. I want you to think about that. Some worldwide stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. They have a world, they have world a worldwide uh, audience, really. audience. Now, one of the interesting conversations I had with Jeremy, and I've had this with some of the other people that live where we live in Puerto Rico that are also um, making a lot of money on, on YouTube, is that the amount of money they're making now is nothing compared to what they're making in the past. Because what YouTube will do is without announcing it, no email, no release, no, you know, no time to prepare. They'll just change something and how something works inside YouTube, just like Google does, which will make it so that his revenue decrease. So YouTube as a source of income for a lot of these content, uh, you know, producers basically has decreased dramatically. And now he's looking for other ways to make money. And all of these uh, content producers are all looking for ways to make money because it goes back to one of the Harris rules. And one of the Harris rules is don't build a mansion on land you do not own. And that's what a lot of these guys have done. And that's what you guys are doing. If you're building your business based on marketing, you're building your business based on land you do not own. And I want you to be really clear about this because it's the difference between having a long-term sustainable business that's ever increasing levels of profit, real profit, versus someone who's frankly constantly struggling and worrying about what other out of control thing, what other you know plates gonna fall from all your spinning plates. Because that's what happens when you base your business on um, bot leads. That's what happens when you base your business on marketing. A little something can change. And all of a sudden, you know, Jay House's videos no longer appear. Uh, one through 10. Now J house has a ton of subscribers and that's where they get a lot of their views. But what happens if all of a sudden their subscribers no longer are getting a notification that there's a new video. YouTube did that for a while. You guys get the point. So for those of you who are in the business, who are thinking that your 2000 and you know, future plan uh, for real estate is going to be more content creation, understand what you are creating. You're creating something that you cannot control. You're creating content for a channel, for a platform that could easily change whatever algorithm. And even if you are lucky enough to have your YouTube video show up on the first page with your keywords, that could change instantaneously. Julie and I've been in the business, uh, you know, frankly, in real estate and coaching before there was the internet. And we have seen all the different businesses got get decimated agents, businesses too, who are based on marketing just because some little, a few little things change. And that is what happens in a changing market. Like what we have now with hypothetically increasing interest rates and not hypothetically absolute increasing inflation that is going to cause all the people who've been able to create revenue, not necessarily profit, but cash flow because of the lot, the ease of sales. As soon as the sales velocity slows down, they're not going to be able to keep up with their financial obligations. Obligations, and that's when all the chickens come home to roost. So I want you guys to keep that in mind as you're building your business, decide exactly where you're going to be investing a majority of your time. That's right. So the last little mini point that I had under the controlling of your schedule is stop using the snooze button. A lot of people talk about that and they say, here's the thing. You start your day with the snooze button. You have started to lie to yourself that the rest of the day you're going to follow your ideal schedule. So Point number three, under being prepared for your success this year, know the days you're working versus the days that you're off each month. We talked to you about this a lot, especially fourth quarter, because there's so much that goes on fourth quarter, but work as best you can on a monthly basis to actually know when you're on and when you're off. Put dollar signs on each workday and X's on non-work days to keep the focus. You can use something like printacalendar.com for easy monthly calendar printables. Much of your stress in real estate is when you planned to take a day off, but you ended up working. Talking on your mobile phone during your kid's baseball game is not the same as going to the game. Work when you're working and play when you're playing. So plan some long weekends to refill the cup. I do this on uh, coaching homework with a lot of our elite coaching clients. When I know that they're about to hit the wall, they're really you know, stressed out and we've got a, maybe a three-day weekend coming up. 
plan something to refill the cup. The stressed out feeling that people get is from having, to your point, Julie, a lack of a schedule, but most importantly, it's a lack of a schedule that is in alignment with what their goals are. In other words, the things that they're scheduling are not things that are getting them results. And so they end up getting frustrated because I did my two YouTube videos today, or I was right. on Facebook doing my liking and whatever, and no leads, no transactions, no money's coming in. That's what causes the stress because intuitively, innately, they know they're wasting their time, but they just aren't ready to accept their ego egos are telling them just keep doing more keep doing more keep doing more and maybe they're listening to external voices that are saying you just haven't created enough content yet so i'm going to give you to julie's point on point number three here i'm going to give you guys a suggested book now this is a book that very few of you will like but all of you should read it's called profits aren't everything they're the only thing and i'll summarize this book for you when you're in your formidable years of forming your real estate business which is really fundamentally your first five years in your real estate business remember in five years 80 percent of 87 percent of all the agents who are active in real estate in five years don't have licenses yet right so your first five years in your business of your real estate business are critical and you cannot be persuaded and dissuaded into thinking that you can do the passive lead generation stuff because it will make you broke. It'll make you broke because it doesn't work or it'll make you broke because it works for a little while and then it stops working. So the whole premise of the book, profits aren't everything, they're the only thing, is when you're forming your business, you've got to put the profits of your business first and you've got to know what activities to be doing in your business so that you make a profit. Just because you sell houses, guys does not mean you're going to make a profit think of the example we gave you earlier about some of the referral fees you guys are paying and some of the expenses you guys are normalizing leaving you with no profit you're working for free by the time that ten thousand dollar check the referral fees paid the brokers paid your other expenses are paid you are barely getting by you've now just paid for the gas in your car and the five lunches you had to buy for that buyer you guys get it so you got to be realizing that when you're in business, the point of the business, the goal of the business is to not just sell units and make, you know, push revenue through It's to make profit. And with that profit, you reinvest it and you can become rich and rich is merely where your money works for you. And you no longer have to work for your money. Don't try to, you know, put us in some sort of greedy, you know, overly politicized bucket. Profit is just that. Right, profit leads to uh, the ability to buy assets, assets that produce passive income, make it so you have some financial breathing room, and then eventually make it so that you are rich, where your money works for you, you no longer have to work for your money. Yes. Do you, do you feel the overriding theme of controlling your own destiny here? Well, it all goes back to proactive lead generation. Well, it does. I mean, we, and you know, some of these companies are still good, and we talk about it in coaching, which, who's good and who's not. There's a whole bunch of companies that are referral fee or used to be referral fee only, right? So you only pay 25% for this lead when it actually closes. Well, for a long time, it was free to sign up and you only pay if it closes. Well, of course, in the past 18 months, all, almost all of those companies now have an expensive fee to sign up. Sometimes they're three to $5,000 to sign up. Sometimes they now have a monthly fee and guess what? They've raised all of their referral fees. And that's not guaranteeing you that you're going to get a listing or that's the buyer. Right. You still have to compete. And I'll tell you what's more guys is, and this is something Julie and I listened to, um, Rob Hahn, Mar what is it? Rob, Rob Hahn. Hahn. And what's the other guy? Right. Greg Harrelson, right? I think that's right. Yeah. And we're listening to their podcast. They only do it like once every six months, but it's always fun. Very, 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 very nerdy, but fun. Very nerdy. And, Lots yeah, of statistics. Right. And when they know, they know their numbers really well. And one of the things they were talking about is the average cost that uh, for one of these lead generation companies, which essentially Zillow is, and all these other companies, the amount of money they're having to spend to generate the lead that they sell to you guys is going up like by five and tenfold because there's so many other people that have gotten into the business, formed businesses to sell leads to you. So the lead selling uh, into the business has become oversaturated. So now the actual lead sellers are having to uh, bid more and pay more in order to have something to sell back to you guys. So that's really what's going on. It's just going to get more and more expensive. And that's the reason that Zillow is moving aggressively towards referral fees. And all these other companies, they're going to follow. Zillow's the, you know, even though they're, I think personally, they're going to come back and be just fine. They've got brilliant management. But at the end of the day, uh, Zillow is going to lean back into selling leads to you guys. And they're going to lean back into selling leads that are going to, they're going to try to sell seller leads. It's a hell of a lot harder than selling buyer leads. But all of that is going to become incredibly expensive. So you got to really wake up and realize that even what you, if you did something last year that worked, it's probably not going to work at the same level this year forward, if at all, because everything is changing. That's the nature of this, especially if you're beholden to buying your leads. That's it. So should we wrap here, Tim, and talk about the daily success game tomorrow and other things they can use as tools 
to ensure their success. No, let's, we have time for one more. One let's more? do one okay, more point. You got it. Yeah. So speaking of which, point number four, use your daily success game activity tracker. If you're a premier or elite coaching client, what is that? Well, it makes it really clear what to do daily that is proactive and it keeps it more fun. Actually, what if you could win? Let's just do a little mindset fun game here. What if you could win a hundred thousand dollar prize for achieving 50 points per week for a month in your real estate practice? You'd get laser focused, wouldn't you? So some of you would earn more than that if you just use the daily success tracker and really drill down. So what's the daily success tracker? It's part of our premier coaching uh, program and all of our coaching programs. What it essentially is, is we're gamifying the work aspect of real estate. And what we it is essentially a uh, self-administered game, if you will. And you give yourself pre-assigned points to each activity. So for example, if you do a proactive lead generation call uh, that's going to give you maybe five points, where if you do a lead follow-up point, a call that'll give you three points. And at the end of the day, your goal is to have 50 points. But the only things on the list are dollar productive activities. <laughs> exactly. There is no TikTok video on that list. Well, I mean, it always goes back to that, right? Not TikTok videos, but... Or, you know what I mean. Well, he, this is another interesting conversation I had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Somebody was talking to me about podcasting versus YouTubes mm -hmm. um, and, the, and doing YouTube videos. And they are asking, so if you're, you know, you're a real estate coach and you guys have tens of thousands of people listen to you on your podcast... And why in this guy's philosophy was um, that agents shouldn't be doing podcasts because it's too hard to get uh, people to actually listen. They should be putting all their efforts into YouTube, to which I then said, well, let's look at the demographics of YouTube. And let's look at the demographics of podcasting. Podcasting attracts an older person. Generally speaking, they're uh, going to be somebody that has the um, fortitude. Yes. And the intellectual curiosity to listen to something that's long form, mm -hmm. whereas YouTube is nothing other than just basically a, a quick hit of, you know, kind of a sample entertainment thing. cocaine, basically. Yeah, actually, we did a whole podcast about podcasting yeah, not we so did. long ago. So if you guys are curious about that. But the, this just this is what I, the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that if you start venturing into the marketing realms and you start thinking about all this media creation, you start deciding you're going to be a media creator. Well, let me give you real numbers from Julie and I's uh, experience. Our YouTube channel, um, it's not a huge channel, but we do get uh, like one of our videos recently had 11,000 views and others had like 100,000 views. And we have a lot of videos and we put up a new video every single day, the video of this podcast. But I'm just going to tell you real numbers. In the last 30 days, that channel's earned $473. I looked before the show today. $473. So you're probably not going to be able to create a channel that's going to create more activity than our channel. You might be able to, but you're probably not going to. So you're not going to be living off your revenue from your YouTube channel. So you're not going to be living off your revenue from any of your social media. The reality is, is that your social media is there to hypothetically generate leads and reinforce you as an expert, to which is the reason why we suggest you do podcasting, because podcasting, the demographic is someone who's going to most likely be a homeowner, buying their second or third home. They're better educated. You know, all the boxes are checked in favor of an agent focusing on podcasting, but ultimately podcasting too, this requires an incredible amount of effort. We have to prepare every single day, every single podcast that we do between the time that Julie and I put in and between the time that our staff puts in every single day is probably two to three hours every single day. Um, and it's almost impossible to work uh, too far in advance because it's just a mountain of work, you know, <laughs> just as sometimes we try to do two or three podcasts, but after that, we just need to, you know, take a break, <laughs> take a break, take a nap. <laughs> take a right. Nap, yeah. But so, and that's the reason ultimately, Julie and I always go back to our core message. What is the marketing supposed to be doing? It's supposed to be generating leads for you. And those leads are then supposed to obviously, you know, become clients and the clients are then supposed to become closings that lead to paychecks, right? Why would you do any marketing whatsoever if in your marketplace you have people right now who have their, who've already self-identified as being uh, people that want to sell their homes? And let's just, again, focus primarily on sellers. Why would you spend any money and time, frankly, on podcasting or anything else looking for leads when there's people in your marketplace right now that are at their hands in the air saying, I want to sell my house? Why would you do it? Why? I want you to answer that question because you perceive it's easier. It's not easier because you perceive it'll take uh, less time than learning how to be a proactive lead generator. That is absolutely not true. 
uh, doing content creation and doing it consistently to the point where you have any kind of following on socials is an extraordinary amount of effort. And that rug could be pulled out from underneath you at any moment into all the hours and you know years that you put into creating your channels could be gone in a heartbeat. And that's the unfortunate truth that's happening to many agents and frankly businesses. So again, I'm going to ask you this question. You have a choice today for the rest of your year and the rest of your life, how to spend your time. Why would you waste time doing things that maybe someday hopefully might bring you some opportunity to maybe someday hopefully sell a house? Why wouldn't you go directly to the people who have their hands in the air right now and say, yes, I want to sell my house? Why wouldn't you do that? Of course you would. That's why the success game gives you points for doing that. Exactly. You can't score points by waiting. No, you can't support exactly that. Like going and liking someone's Facebook post. Look, it's fine. You can do that on your coffee break or whatever, but don't think that's work. No, that's that, not that's work. That's in addition to that's not instead of, and it's not really necessary anyway. Exactly. Not really necessary being the keywords that Julie just uh, said. I want you guys to be very clear in all of this because your effort does equal your outcome. As long as the effort that you're putting forth is designed to produce the outcome that you're desirous of. So activity in general it just even a furiously a high amount of activity does not produce the results that you want unless you are actually thinking through logically what it is that you're trying to accomplish. This is the reason Julie and I say when it comes to lead follow up, frankly, if, if it's not a transaction, it, first of all, they have to answer all the pre-qualifying questions. They have to be uh, a motivated seller. You have to, you know, it's a script that they follow that you ask that they follow and you know what the outcome is. But if that person through the questions, you determine that they want to sell sometime the next year or two, do not spend any time on that lead. Why the hell would you spend time on that lead? The reason you spend time on that lead is because you want to fool yourself into believing that that's a future paycheck opposed to getting back to work and generating paychecks that will happen in the next, you know, 30 to 90 days. That's where all your activities should be every day. Focusing purely on the people that are going to close in the next 30 to 90 days. Tim, are you telling me not to form a database? Look, you can form a database. You can form a database and you can drip on them. You can drop off your pumpkin pies. You can do all that stuff. But do not fool yourself into thinking that that is going to get you paid. You know, I know it's true. Because 87, and uh, what is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling over this, right? Yeah. In five years, 80% of all the active licensees are people that not don't yet have real estate licenses, which means the probability of you succeeding long-term doing passive lead generation, doing marketing, worrying about a lot of the things that you guys are told uh, that are important will result in your imminent failure. There's basically a 10% chance that you're going to succeed. What do those 10% of all those successful agents long-term have in common? I guarantee you, it's what we're talking about on our podcast, what we talk about in our coaching program, what we talk about in our books, and what Julie and I have been talking about for decades. So come on, guys. Well, make this your talking about. We did it. Yeah, we did I it. I mean, we're not just pontificating here. Well, we are pontificating. It's a yeah, podcast. Yes, but I, <laughs> what I'm saying is we you know, have lived their lives. Yeah, we sold and, real and estate at a high know. level for a long time. Exactly. That's the reason we know what we're saying is that's true. That's how we know. And it, and it is, I mean, at the end of the day, it does end up being faster and, dare I say, easier then trying a bunch of crap out and waiting. That's not sustainable. We'll talk to you guys on the show tomorrow.